All right, so what I want to show today is um, we're gonna analyze the damped waveforms of these coils and see how the damped waveform has a lot to do with when the coil's frequency input is um, increased. So it's on right now. And so this is the damped waveform of the conventional rodent coil. Right, so we can see 200 microseconds per division. Most of our oscillations die out after about 400 microseconds. I mean, almost six, right? Um, we can also see that when we have our wave here, the positive impulse, so this is the signal I'm putting into my little DC pulsing circuit, and when we get this pulse, we get this positive oscillation, and then when we release the charge, we get this swing, right? Cool. And uh, my probe here is set to uh, 100x. So basically on here for this signal, it's uh, 100 volts per division, right? So if we freeze that, we're getting uh, about one, two, three, a little over 300 volts, right? And that's just damped oscillation. Um, when we increase the frequency, you can see that we can produce a higher voltage. And we do that because the damped oscillations start to hit each other and when they constructively interfere. So now we got one, two, three, over 400 volts, right? Well, sweet. So now I'm not gonna change a single thing and we're gonna move this over to this secondary. So now we're gonna pulse this dual resonant um, interweave torus. And we can analyze the waveform now. So turn it on and we'll get the frequency down. So now that's just one damped oscillation. So now check this out. 200 microseconds per division this way, right? Now we're getting two, four, six, eight, almost, almost a thousand microseconds. So one microsecond of oscillation. Um, that's significantly different than the conventional rodent coil. And not to mention that now we have, uh, you see the smallest ones going down to here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, over 600 volts of resonant activity. Um, this thing is almost two times better than this. And what's interesting is this is half the length is this. And this frequency, this resonant frequency is half of what this is. So this is resonant around like 50 kilohertz, let's say, and this is around 25. So we can see there's this difference but in the difference, we have double the voltage. And we're doing the same input, pretty much. So that's super cool. Um, now, when we increase the frequency, the same thing happens as the last one, where we can start to increase our overall voltage. And now, now we're all the way up here and all the way down here. And I got this thing to enter continuous wave, which was a first. Let's see if I can, I can do it. I doubt it. But we can get some really strong resonances here. So that's, that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's over 700 volts. I've gotten it up to eight. Um, I did have a little bit better um, resonances when I used uh, two 12 volt batteries, but I played with them too long and now they're dead. 
so I wasn't able to replicate that. But this is a 13.8 volt um, power supply, and we can see a key difference in the voltage gains between the two. And uh, this is two times the voltage gain as that one. And uh, yeah, so give you a little tour coil. <clears throat> Took me a long time putting the putting the primary through this part right here is the trickiest part because it literally has to be in the exact spot and I did all these ones consistently so yeah took me a while to do that and let me tell you it's super mind-boggling trying to figure that out but. Yeah, so this, uh, when I use the signal generator and uh, this microwave capacitor, 0.74 microfarads in between, I got um, around uh, resonant frequency around 23.8 kilohertz, um, which is different than just the secondary um, before. So I think by adjusting the capacitance on the secondary, we can maximize our voltage gain. Uh, I haven't really done that yet, but that would be considered uh, tuning the coil. But so far, voltage gain is about two times better than this. And uh, yeah, same voltage input. So, thanks for watching.